Salzburg, 1937. For years, conductor Arturo Toscanini had been dominating the festival, religiously attended by celebrities from around the world. Now, for the first time, he was faced with serious competition. Wilhelm Furtwängler, already a star in the German Reich, was making his debut. An argument ensued in Toscanini's dressing room. Toscanini accused Furtwängler of selling out to the Hitler regime for continuing to conduct there. Furtwängler vehemently denied this, declaring great music immune to any political appropriation. The colleagues had turned to enemies. Furtwängler entered into a pact with the Nazis while Toscanini emigrated to the US. His was the better choice, and yet it's Furtwängler who today is worshipped as a cult figure. How was this possible, and how do music and ethics go together? Conductors in those days were still people of absolute power. The authority comes about the knowledge and the vision. And then, of course, it, it's everybody's personal temperament, how you convey it. Toscanini aveva un carattere molto forte e molto autoritario. Quindi era un uomo estremamente brutale era considerato una specie di dittatore. I think Toscanini, the idea of having a rival never crossed his mind. He just didn't believe that he had any. Die beiden waren Machtmenschen, außerordentlich begabt, außerordentlich selbstbewusst und das passt an einem Ort selten gut zusammen. Anhand dieser Gegenüberstellung Toscanini und Furtwängler lassen sich sowohl die Möglichkeiten als auch die Grenzen dessen nachzeichnen, was an Verhaltensweisen im faschistischen Regime möglich war. Musicologist Harvey Sachs was born in the US, but spent a long time living in Italy before moving back to New York a few years ago. Both locations connect him to the man who has been his passion, Arturo Toscanini. Especially in America, where they like to say this is the biggest building and the, the biggest lake and the whatever, there had to be a greatest conductor, and so he fit the bill. Conductors as different as Pierre Monteux and Otto Klemper considered him to be absolutely the greatest in that time. If you read Klemper's um, uh, article about him, he refers to him as the king of conductors. <laughs> 